What's going on, everybody? Last episode, we told you we would go deeper on a few topics, and that's what we're going to do today. And by we, I mean just Ricker. It's going to be a short episode, but very informational. We're going to go into Apple and NVIDIA, OpenAI, OpenAI Investment Plus, a little bit about Thrive Capital, who they are, who founded that, what they buy into as a venture capital company going to go into China and Mexico and China's increasing influence in Mexico in terms of the electric vehicle sector of the world market, as some might say. How China's jumping ranks up into higher numbers of export of automotives. And a little rundown on uber everybody's previously hated stock but somehow got the price back into where some people might like it if they bought at an appropriate entry point you can do a one sheet on it so a couple parameters of things i like to see about a company and a stock uh that is the intro <laughs> There won't be an intro besides that. Um, so, Apple and NVIDIA were getting into an open AI, open AI investment. Um, this put open AI at about $100 billion in valuation. Um, it was also led by Thrive Capital. Let's jump into Thrive Capital real quick first um thrive capital is a venture capital firm investing fund um it was made in it was founded by a man named joshua kushner in 2009 uh i'll go into mr kushner after but thrive started with allegedly 40 million dollars in an institutional fund which is kind of hilarious because uh the only thing that's online about Mr. Kushner is that he tried to start up and then failed it, you know, failed, but it didn't work out. And uh, then just had deep relationship with Princeton people and the guy who founded CAA and some family funds. Apparently he got 40 mil. So that's fun. Um, early investors in... Instagram, Facebook, put in 3.5 million days before Instagram sold to Facebook for 1 billion. Uh, you can do the math on that and tell me what that X is. Days is crazy. Uh, invested in GroupMe, which was acquired by Skype, and Warby Parker and Twitch are some of the investments that Thrive Capital has done. Um, Go in the incubation stage, they uh, get in early and try to put a rocket onto some companies. Um, they recently got funds themselves, raising $3.3 billion, uh, have stakes in Stripe, GitHub, and like we said, OpenAI. Um, yeah, I, I might go further even in a different episode to dive into Mr. Kushner the founder of Thrive, but uh, Thrive was even earlier than just this round. Um, Kushner and Altman apparently got together in uh, 2022, a little bit before that. Uh, it was embattled with Microsoft and Microsoft's position in, in the company. I mean, I'm sure this is all after uh, the nonprofit ordeal, which I might go into in a different episode as well. Um, Thrive led in early 2023, so not this 2024 round. Thrive Capital led $130 million in investment into OpenAI at a $29 billion valuation. So a couple years later, you go from 23, $29 billion valuation to about a hundred um and then 
apparently, you know, working with Altman through getting fired, which I feel like a lot of people forgot about, but homie was ousted from OpenAI and then brought him back like CM Punk a couple days later. Anyways, Thrive. Thrive, Apple, and NVIDIA all want to get in and did get in, I believe, uh, into OpenAI this new round. Um, which is kind of weird for a couple reasons. Different reasons for Apple than NVIDIA. Apple seems pretty Apple-ish where you acquire um, a technology and then implement it into the iPhone or the the MacBooks. Uh, they did it with Siri. But it, it, it's a little bit of like a Google Bing situation where you kind of, Apple is kind of admitting defeat with like, all right, uh, Bing to Google, there's no switching costs, right? But Google is the clear winner. Um, and, and you know, Bing admits that in itself. Uh, even if they don't say it out loud. So when you have Apple kind of hedging, um, you know, Apple work with Gemini, working with OpenAI, uh, it seems like that is going to be getting them over the hump of having like AI agents. Um, they can do smaller, like local stuff, uh, smaller language models themselves through Apple, but uh, it's a little bit of like, all right, OpenAI is going to be the AI purveyor. And if not in the public eye, at least this is the infrastructure that's going to run our, our AI agents, I'm assuming, on the iPhones. Um, NVIDIA is in kind of a weird situation because OpenAI said that they wanted to do chips later down the line. That one is different head scratcher. Is it hedging to get a stake in something that could be bigger than NVIDIA in making chips? Doesn't seem like that would be the case to me. Um, but you do have these giant, giant uh, titans in the business world of the U.S. and, and their global businesses uh, putting stake into what has been the most talked about thing since crypto two, three years ago. As far as Apple and OpenAI goes, will the Apple intelligence, you know, boost people buying another iPhone out of their like original cycle? About five, six years every cycle, uh, people update an iPhone. Possibly. The, uh, you had a big jump with when they they changed displays, iPhone 6. Could it be a similar super, super, super large margin of a jump? I tend to lean on the no side. Uh, anecdotally, uh, I probably wouldn't upgrade and I usually don't upgrade my phones unless it's just not working anymore. The battery's depreciated so much it gets annoying. Um, it could be somewhere for Apple on the subscription side where you saw ChatGPT and, and Jim and I have premium models of, no pun intended, their model. Another anecdote, I you know, I had subscribed to the, the upsell version of ChatGPT it kind of feels like you're missing out a little bit. It's like, what's on the other side? And the barrier to switch down is pretty big. Uh, if people are trying to, you know, cut budget, parts of their budget, it could be that a lot of the retail average person in the U.S. would stay away from unsubscribing to the G GPT version of us. Uh, 20 bucks a month really cuts deep. But I think that, you know, it's it's somewhat like it makes you lazy to want to switch because it is pretty fun and kind of does something to the human brain where it's like, oh, fast and shiny. And it's a pretty good service. Uh, but 
that upsell of a version doesn't exactly bring in the total bank for Google and OpenAI, and it probably won't do the same uh, with a subscription model to get Apple in a, in a place of growth where a lot of people are expecting them to be. NVIDIA, on the other hand, it's a whole other story. Everybody wanted them to do better than the best that probably has ever done in, the, in a minute, but uh, you know, we'll see where it's really more interesting where Apple takes OpenAI, especially because it hasn't been in a public headline of uh, Apple making acquisitions like this. Mexico, China, electric vehicle expansion. I was kind of bummed about this because Trump started talking about it. I was like, ah, oh, he beat me to it. But this is kind of a, a topic that butts heads with the political sphere. So you get you get your political talking heads talking about it. I might have to cut Uber off. So it might be a, a double deep dive instead of an Uber because I got an engagement to get to. Um, so China has led a pretty big expansion into its EV market, uh, and that is seen substantially in Mexico, largely through BYD. BYD is lower cost. There's a trade agreement called the U.S.-Mexico-Canada, U.S.-Mexico-Canada agreement. Uh, that makes trading for Mexico with other countries a little more lenient. And uh, it, it gives China a big foothold, if it wants it, in that country. And that could, to some people, be a mistake, as one Mr. Trump thinks. Overview, let's pull back a little bit, see what exactly, uh, where this these numbers go. So China, second ranked GDP in the world, 19.37 trillion. Car exports is a pretty big part of Chinese revenue. July 2024 is the third top. By value, China is not a big player in the automotive export rankings. Goes to Germany, Japan, USA, South Korea, and Mexico. And China's after all those by exports by value. But if you do total vehicle exports, China is first with 3.2 million and Germany is 2.6 million in 2022. So Germany, you know, they got automobile. In 2022, China's automobile export sales reached an increase of 55% to 3.1 million. So that's a 55% increase from 2021 to 2022 and accounting for 36% of the total export volume. That's basically all BYD. BYD was the first in global plug in EV in 2023 across the world and second across the world with EVs plug-in was Tesla with 13.2. BYD is planning to build a big old factory in Mexico which will compete directly with Tesla. Uh, BYD is pretty substantially cheaper than a Tesla. The Dolphin Mini, which is a pretty sick name, goes for 21300 US dollars, which is about the half the price of the cheapest Tesla. So if people want cheap EVs, which is, you know, a whole other topic if you want to talk about having infrastructure for a bunch of EVs in a country, basically any country, especially in the U.S., and I, I doubt Mexico tops U.S. with EV infrastructure. It's, uh, it's quite an overload on a system. China, 20% uh, of light vehicles sold in Mexico in 2023 were imported from China, and that, again, is a big old 50% increase from the year before. The trade tensions that have led the U.S., raise tariffs on Chinese EVs is a 100% tariff if China wants to pop in an EV into the U.S. And the European Union did a similar thing, but in Mexico, there's a U.S.-Mexico-Canada agreement 
that makes it easier for Mexico to deal with China. As a consequence of all this, U.S. might want to tighten those trade rules. Canada kind of did it on their own. We're like, yeah, we'll we'll take it easy with the Chinese stuff. We'll put some taxes, aka tariffs, on it. But Mexico's like, yo, we got cheap EVs coming in through good old Jinping. Let's let's get some of that action. Um, so getting in uh, through Mexico, China could be selling a bunch of EVs, where. You know, U.S. might want to be, for the sake of either strategic purposes or just for showing their big old flag, want to stop China from getting vehicles in the country without paying some Cold War tariffs. You could also say it's a, say this about any country, but if a country has major technological eyes and cars that is driving across your country and you might see a different nation as an adversary you might want to tax that asset to 100 percent so it doesn't happen um yeah it's a whole big shebang it goes into politics i'm not the biggest fan of the the automotive sector myself i like tesla I couldn't handle the price swings and the CEO swings when everything was going pretty good and being stable. Tesla freaking took you for a ride, and I was over that ride. Um, yes, sir. Do a quick, I'll do a quick rundown of Uber. And I'll share with some parameters of the one sheet of a company I look for. Um, first bit is a little bit of... Uh, a little bit of my mind, a lot of this is from classic slides from Ian Dunlap. So shout out. One sheet. Sector they're in. Industry. Founder. CEO. Business overview. Founding team. Who invested early? What's their revenue? Cash on hand. And some moats. I'll say the moats. Low production cost. High switch cost. Network effect intangible asset and a few other go back into his slides and you can find it uh sectors apparently technology but there's a bunch of freaking sites that say a bunch of different things trading view says transportation it's a software company but i don't know why trading view would say that travis kalanick and garrett camp founded uber in 2009 ceo since 2017 is your boy dara kosh rao shai Uber operates a platform connecting drivers and consumers to ride handling services and deliveries, including foods, freight, and logistics. Founding team was Kalanick, Camp, and Graves was the first CEO and an early employee. The early investors were first round capital benchmark individuals. You had Jeff Bezos and Google Ventures hopping in. Seed funding round was 200000 from Mr. Garrett Camp. Institutional funding was in 2010 when Uber raised $1.25 million. Revenue in 2023 is somewhat irrelevant. The cash on hand in that time was $5.5 billion. You can go look up the 2020. Good note to me to always have updated numbers. Low production cost, uh, asset light as business. And I'm saying all this going down the one sheet because it kind of got back to a place where people liked it. Uh, Uber moats, somewhat low production cost. The high switching cost of what you want to see in a moat. Good golly gosh, you could go to basically Lyft. But that switch is pretty breakable uh, as far as, you know, brand value goes to not make that switch and brand loyalty. Uber is definitely number one. Um, if you're taking a ride, people say Uber and not Lyft, but they always include that link right next to Uber. Network effect. 
results from a large base of both drivers and customers. Uber completed over 2 billion trips in 2022. Is that a huge network effect? Can other people tell people to use Uber? Probably not. Definitely in the beginning. Uh, you know, founded in 2009. I did my first Uber trip somewhere between 2014 and 2018. And there's definitely some word of mouth catching a ride. And, you know, once it's really needed, you, you pop your, your family member in an Uber. And you could have some, some network growth that way. 50% um, of customers using the service multiple times per month. If you're using an Uber, man, that price gets up there if you're using it for transportation solely it'll it'll pop you so a little rundown on uber apple and nvidia getting into open ai on this funding round of the private company head by mr sam altman trying to get a positioning in what they see as a future of technology at least features lol thought it was crypto china and mexico china's building heavy EVs into the Mexico market, led by BYD. As far as value goes, it's ranking up there. China is, and the U.S. might not like it if they're selling what should be 100% tariffs of China electric vehicles through Mexico into the Estados Unidos. Ricker and Bond, everybody. Thanks for listening. Tell me if you like this on Instagram, Ricker and Bond, uh, DM us. We always love DM. Say, hey, that quick 15 minute deep dive is what I really like with one Ricker's very sultry voice. All right, peace, 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 peace. Enjoy it.